Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah Ba'ashim Mucha Kadash, the bonds to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Greetings and salutations to Yaakim pushing the word in truth, likewise, sincerity. This is your brother Yaakwab out of Great Millstone Atlanta Church. Um, here once again um, with my reasonable service, um, you know, with another lesson. All right, Lord willing to um, seal the lambs of Yahweh Mashiach. All right. I'll just jump right into it with the uh, the first scripture. It says John chapter five. This is Saint John chapter five, verse thirty nine. It says, "Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me." All right. So we see here these letters are in red. Signifying what? This is Yahweh Shah speaking. And this is a commandment. It says, search the scriptures. All right. During the time of Paul, it was uh, the, the church of, um, matter of fact, uh, let me just grab that. It's a certain level of diligence that comes along with this um this walk. All right. Let me see. Shalakia. Like, yeah. It's in the book of Acts. All right. It's a certain amount of diligence that comes along uh, with this this walk. All right. Um, and in your diligence, because when you go into that word diligence. It means to to, um, to study and to labor. All right. And a part of, you know, a part of the walk is being studious, being scholarly. All right. We're not niggas, man. We are that old man that you see what those guys were doing in Baltimore. All right. Being carnal. You know, and, and guess what? These these are the same guys who say reincarnation doesn't exist. Okay? These are the same guys that say we should not worship Yahweh Shai. And we see the Lord has brought them to a perilous end. All right? Because of their folly, because of their um their wickedness, and ultimately because of their pride. All right? But um you know, being men of the Lord is a certain upkeep and housekeeping that must be maintained. All right. And that is exercised through you being studious. All right. And because in that, as Yahweh Shah said, you will find eternal life. All right. This is Acts, the 17th chapter, um, verse 11. It says, uh, these were more, I'm going to start at verse 10. It says, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. See, the church of Berea. It says, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those of Thessalonica. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. And search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Right. So, you know, as the church of Berea and their nobility, they didn't just take what Paul says for face value and just run with it and become puppets. No, they gave their own due diligence. All right. They gave their own due diligence. The apostles don't want you to just be robots and take what they say and not, you know, search, not give, you know, put your heart and sweat in this thing as well, all right, to increase your knowledge, all right? This, this, this is a thing, this is something of, uh, it's a thing of scholarship. Yes, you have your teachers, you have your professors that teach you, 
But you also have to go study yourself. You also have to search the scriptures yourself to show these things to be true, to prove these things to be true. All right. In your own mind. All right. In your own mind. It says that every man be fully persuaded. How are you going to be fully persuaded? By searching these things out yourself. All right. And validating these things yourself through the spirit. All right. Okay. So I'm going to go back to John the eighth chapter. Excuse me. John the fifth chapter. All right. This is John 5 and um, 30. 39. It says, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Right. All right. These scriptures, they testify of Yahweh Shai. They, they spoke of his coming. They spoke of, of, of what of the signs to recognize in those times of, uh, of the coming of the Messiah. All right. Matter of fact, let's get it. I said they speak of me. All right. The, it, it, it's, as is written in the book of Hebrews, behold, I come in the volume of the book is written of me. Speaking about Yahweh Shah. And likewise, the elect, which is the body of Yahweh Shah. All right. This is John, the ninth chapter. The uh, sixth verse, it says, for unto us, a child is born unto us, a son is given and the government and that government is going into world. All right. That's where you get in John chapter three, verse 16. It says, for God so loved the world. All right. Which is cosmos. All right. In, in, in the Greek, in the proper pronunciation, the cosmos. All right. Which is. Is means a, a harmonious arrangement, a government. All right, and that government is that world of Israel. All right, it says it says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, which is the world. All right, which is the world of what the world of Israel. All right, did he did Yahweh Shah come for the Nazi government? Did he come for Stalin's? Uh, 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 did he come for the government of the of, of the uh, Soviet Union? Huh? Did he come for the government of communist China, of America, with all this witchcraft and wickedness that's being perpetuated on this earth by the Americans? Showing themselves to be illegitimate leaders of this earth day in and day out, consistently proving themselves to be to being invalid. Did he come for the, the world of the wicked? La ah. No, he came for the world and the government of the righteous, which is starting with the elect. The elect is the governing body of the kingdom of heaven, the true heirs of this planet Earth. It says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Who's who we know is Yahweh Shah. Now, verse seven, it says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. <laughs> it says upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom. All right. Dealing with the tabernacle of David being raised up as the days of old, as it was prophesied in Amos. All right. It says, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. Now, this is important. It says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, watch this. Verse 8. It says, the Lord sent a word unto, into Jacob. Mm. Mm. It says, the Lord. Now, we can't let this. We can't just skip over this. It's the next verse. And it has it, it, this next verse. This verse, verse 8. It further elaborates and gives understanding to, and, and, and puts everything in context from verse 6 and 7. Verse 8, it says, The Lord sent a word into Jacob. Did, did, did Yahweh shall not say, Search the scriptures? He said, For in, in them you think you have salvation. 
the scriptures, the words. It says the Lord sent a word into Jacob, Jacob being the 12 tribes of Israel, black, Hispanics, native Indian and all who are scattered abroad. Greetings. It says the Lord sent a word into Jacob. And what did it do? It said, and it has lightened upon Israel. What is that word? That word is, is the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah and his coming embodied that testimony with his actions. He said, believe in him for his work's sake. His work was equivalent to the word. All right. It said it had lightened upon Israel. What does the script say? Did not Yahweh Shah say, I am the light of the world. He's the light of the world of Israel. All right. If you can receive it, if you can receive it. Let's see here. Matter of fact, I'm going to have to grab that. That's, I'm going to have to grab that one. Yeah, I was Let's see here. Here we go. See, what do you say? This is Yahweh Shah speaking. This is John chapter 8, verse 12. It said, Then spake Yahweh Shah again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. What did it just say in the book of Isaiah? It said, it, and it, the word, it had lightened Israel. Israel, which is that government. The government of Israel. All right. The world. Going to the Greek cosmos, which means har 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 um, harmonious arrangement, government, which is speaking of the nation of Israel. It says, Then spake Yahweh Shah again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follow of me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. See? Matter of fact, we're going to get there in the Greek. We're going to get it in the Greek. Stop playing with them. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's put it in ink. This is um, John. We can go to um matter of fact, let's go to let's go to that exact verse that we now we're gonna go to John 3 16 first. We're gonna do it quick. Then we're gonna go to John 8 and 12 and see if it's the same world as um the same world, which it is. Alright, um it says, all right, as we know the scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever and whosoever is speaking of Israel, pursuant to Acts, the second chapter, I believe the um, 21st verse, ye men of Israel, hear these words, as Paul has it written. All right. It says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right. For God so loved the world, which is cosmos in the Greek. All right. Which means what? And um, it says an app. It says in harmonious arrangement or constitution, order, government. See? Now, government, going back to, see, let's do it. What did it just read in Isaiah? We're going to go back to it. Verse 7, it says, of the increase of his government, in peace there should be no end. Verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Yahweh is that son, the son of God. All right. It says, And the government shall be upon his shoulder, which is that world. Going down to verse 8, we get to understand. It says, The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it had lightened upon Israel. Not the other nations, but Israel. Israel, the promises were given to Israel, the covenant, the adoption, the giving of the law. And who concerning the flesh, Mashiach came. Stop playing with us. The covenant is for us. It's a wrap. You've been blinded, been blinded by your own illusions, your own pride to think that you can wiggle your way into this holy thing of ours. This thing of ours, this thing of the Israelites, you're not included, man. You haven't been invited to this party. See? 
And it's, it, and it's based upon blood. It's based upon faith. It's based upon love. If you can receive it. All right. That's John 3, 16. Bam. Let's go to John 8 and 12. We're going to see if it's the same word, which it is. I am the light of the world. Let's get it. See? Cosmos. All right? Which is what? Means a harmonious arrangement, a government, constitution, order, as you see. All right? In which we know, pursuant to Isaiah, the ninth chapter, and the sixth, and the seventh, and the eighth verse, that government is speaking about the government of Israel. All right? Let's go to John chapter 6, verse 63. We're going to finish it off from here unless the Lord puts something else on the plate through the Spirit. All right? It says, it is the Spirit that quickeneth. The Spirit is, is speaking of the Word. The Spirit is the doctrine, the truth. All right? And quickeneth means what? Bring to life, resurrect. Let's get that word quickeneth in the Greek, which is... Uh, Zao Payo Oh yeah, it's like it. It's um Zu Poyo. Zu Poyo. Shlakia. Zu Zu Poyo. Quick enough. Alright. To produce alive, beget, or bear living young. To cause to live. Make alive. Which what? I uh, Aisha Make alive. Give life. Nathan Chaya. To was this is a heavy one. To was ooh. It says by spiritual power to arouse and invigorate. To restore to life. <laughs> hey man, this, this stuff is um. This is beautiful. So in that Greek word is um zupoyo. Zupoyo. All right. So it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The spirit does all those things. The spirit brings the light, gives life, makes alive. Are we not the valley of the shadow of death? And it's the spirit, it's that breath of life that has given us the understanding, that doctrine, given us that wisdom, given us our nationality back, our culture, our heritage, our pride, healthy pride at that. It says, the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. Flesh meaning what? Um, sin, the ways of this world, man. Your own carnal dealings. They don't profit anything. They're transitory, not eternal. It says, watch this. It says, the words, that's a key word. It says, the words that I speak unto you. What, what was written in Isaiah, the ninth chapter? It says, the Lord sent a word unto Jacob, into Jacob. And it had lightened Israel. Yahweh is that word pursuing the John the first chapter. All right. It said, the words that I speak unto you. They are spirit. See, there it is. The words are the spirit. It says, and they are life. And they are life. All right. And this is the only dealing with the nation of Israel, man. You other nations don't have a chance in hell. You should have thought about that when you took the Lord's precious gold and his precious ornaments. And I, I speak of his people. And you mocked and scorned us and you 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 stuck you stuffed us in slave ship slave ships as sardines in a can. One on top of the other. As if it's a horror film. And you brought us over here into America and you completely destroyed us as a people. You put us up for public display. And you push all sorts of madness and wicked philosophy within our people, homosexual behavior. You've raped our man, you raped our woman. You've eaten, you literally have eaten our children in your demonic sacrifices. And you think it's not a problem. And you think you go, you're going to have anything to do with this, this covenant, this promise, the glory, the preeminence. Are you mad? Are you mad? No. No, la. -a. But you have a future in Revelations, the 13th chapter. 
the ninth verse, and it reads, it says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth, let me make sure these, let me make sure they see it. I want to make sure they read and understand exactly what's taking place. So, see, you won't, you won't be able to say you didn't know. Because this is, it says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. If you have understanding, if you have any inclination of wisdom, it says, let him hear. Then understand this. Verse 10, it says, he that leadeth into captivity, who led the Israelites into captivity, was it not the Arabs? Was it not the Edomites, which is the so-called right ways? The baby E's? Was it not the Moabites? The Ammonites? The Gagashites? The Philistines, these so-called rat Jews who claim to be Jews, but they're not Jews. But of the seed of Amalek, of the Khazarian Empire, who converted to Judaism under the leadership of King Bulan and the influence going back to Her the, the Herodian dynasty. Stop playing with us, man. The gig is up. It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. That's the price. You can talk about this and that all you want and you can worship your gods and you can see. But it says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Who killed, who killed the Israelites with the sword? Was it not Muhammad? No peace be upon him. For he slaughtered our ancestors with the sword because we didn't want to bow down to his infidelity. We didn't want to bow down to his folly of a religion. So he beheaded us. Was it not Antiochus Epiphanes and those filthy Greeks? As is written in the book of Maccabees, who threw our children down headlong off the wall, who hung infants because they were circumcised, who tortured a mother and her seven children and Eleazar the priest with excruciating torture, boiling them alive, ripping the skin off them, burning them alive. And, and, and you act as if it's not a price to pay. You act as if there's not a just God in the heavens waiting to let down his reign and force upon your heads. You act as if you've gotten away with all this, as if there's no justice in the heavens, as if like as if the Lord is not long suffering. As if the children of Israel are not those people. As if Yahweh Shai is not returning. But see, all these things are. And very shortly, you shall be not. It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. It's not an option. Even if I wanted to, I could, he said, must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. Lord willing, this video was an exhortation, edification to the sincere laborers, the sheep of Yahweh Shemashiach, the proper and the only name. Of the son of God. And he is the son of God. Of the seed of David. Declared to be the son of God. According to the spirit of holiness. Go check the scriptures Muslims. He proclaimed to follow the Quran. But did not Muhammad say. Did, was it not Muhammad say. We believe in all the prophets. We believe in Isa. We believe in the Torah and Injia. But what, you're not searching the scriptures. Because if you search the scriptures. You will understand it spoke of him. You will understand that the Israelites are the people of both of the books. Not that the Quran is a book at all. But, but mere fairy tales and a fabrication. Clinging on to some of the stories and the, the, the non-fictional uh, uh, events of the Bible. Taking hold to it as, your, as if it's your own. Talking as if Muhammad can't be a prophet. He's not Israelite, nigga. But did not Muhammad tell you to go search the scriptures? Did, did not Muhammad tell you to go to the Bible? Did he, not, did he not say we believe in all the prophets? But what did, what did Prophet David say? Peace be upon him. What did Prophet David say? What did King David say? How can Muhammad be a prophet? 
I don't get it. How can he be a prophet if King David said this before Muhammad was even a, a seed in the man in, in the man's um in the man's set? Thousands of years before Muhammad was even conceived. King David said this. This book of Psalms. But 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 you believe in the prophet. Y'all don't even y'all don't even read the Bible, you heretics. You got damn fake Muslims. But you can't even you can't even tell me anything that's written in the scriptures in the Bible that came hundreds of years and thousands of years before the Quran. Whom the Quran um tells you that it's a successor of. Please. Please. This is Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. It says, He showeth his word, that is, unto Jacob. His statutes and in the reason it says, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Meaning he has not dealt so with any other nation. No other nation has these statutes. No other nation can be a prophet. Muhammad is an Ishmaelite. That's why when you read the Quran, he tried to slide Ishmael into the promise. But Abraham, peace be upon him, he casted away Ishmael because Isaac was that. It said, in Isaac shall the seed be called, nigga. Catch up, in Isaac shall the seed be called. And it never changed. The, Lord, the Lord's promise in his word is everlasting. It said, he show off his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for and as for his judgment, they have not known them. So what is Muhammad talking about? What is he talking about? Catch up, young man. What is he talking about? Is 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 written, it says, and as for his judgment, they have not known them. That's why you can't show me one prophecy in the Quran. Because they have not known them. That's why when you, read, when you read the Quran, it's a combination of multiple stories and accounts that took place in the Bible combined together. Folk tales, not facts. It was not Abraham that was, it was not Abraham who, who knocked down the, um, the idol. I believe it was um, Gillian, if I'm not mistaken. All right. It was not um, Abraham who was casting the fire. It was uh, it was the three holy children. All right. And you can you can search the scriptures and you will find that. All right. They were, that's what the Quran does. It just combines a bunch of uh, uh, biblical stories together, man, as one account. All right. But when you go into the to the ancient scrolls, when you go to the Torah, when you go into the book of the prophets, you understand that. Anyway, Shalom.